Hello, and welcome to ShePack Unleashed. I'm one of your hosts, Tanya. I'm Nicole. Welcome to your weekly dose of candid discussion and the pursuit of finding your tribe in this journey of motherhood, womanhood, and sisterhood. I'm Ashley. Join us as we leave no stone unturned. In each episode, we have heart-to-heart conversations that aim to challenge and empower one another. I'm Jenny. No more waiting. She Pack Unleashed begins now. In this week's episode, Making Waves, stories from Summer Swim Team. Splish splash. <laughs> I was taking a bath. <laughs> I couldn't resist. That. I literally Sorry. love it. <laughs> I all mean, right. in all seriousness, I think that swim skills are a safety issue and are really important. Absolutely. Does this, does this come from your anxiety brain? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a leading I cause concur. of death for children zero to four. And so investing in swim skills is really important, which is why my children ended up in survival swim, which I can't even talk about. But Beto took them, thank God. And I'm really grateful. Do you grateful want me to talk about it? That my he's kids always did been too. able to swim. <laughs> like my kids could swim before they could walk. Yeah. Evan took survivor swim and it traumatized him, but he okay. still can't swim. So explain for any of our listeners who have not done survival swim what that is. Because I know yeah. I've heard you girls talk about it. Traumatizing. Never let Ashley have a moment. I, okay. Yeah. I can see why it would be traumatizing for some. So survival swim is like, I think it's called like ISR, like infant survival rescue, something like that. The idea is if a child of any age falls in the water, they can self rescue. So it's like a flip to your back to float and get over to even like with the clothes side. on, yes. clothes on. Yeah, the test they had to pass. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So your kids, Jenny and my kids, went to the same swim school my, to do that. Evan went to. Oh, w- went there too. That yeah. same place. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then, yeah, that's five kids between us that out of the seven that did that. I so. still can't swim, but yeah. And I would say four out of the five, it was successful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like Evan successful. passed his test. That's, so a, that's, a, that's an 80% average. That's but pretty I, good. I don't think survival swim teaches you to swim. Just no. to be really clear. No, it, it teaches you to all. flip and float. Yep. The end. Yep. And I, there are some other parents that don't like that approach and do like the let's mommy and me blow bubbles. That's what we what, ended which up is doing. Fine how too. It, that how did that place. go for you? It was fine. For a while, it was something to do. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Uh, dear God, when Ryan was young, it was just a way to get out of the house and and it taught him some skills, right? But it was expensive. So we didn't mm-hmm. do it for very long. And we didn't have a community pool in our neighborhood, right? So we had very few opportunities to swim. And so I did have some of that feeling of like, I need to like make sure he knows what to do if he ends up in a pool. But I couldn't I couldn't wrap my brain around the survival swim it lessons. Was, yeah. But I understand expensive. the It was very expensive, the survival swim yeah. too. Because it was one on one. And like my husband could not sit in the lessons. He had to like leave. Same. Because it was so traumatizing for him mm. to like hear Same. our kids screaming him, like, Dad, help me, help me, help yeah, me. Yeah, that the whole I, I will town. be the first to admit that there's there's a certain like resilience as a parent you need to have to like sit there and listen to that stuff because it is hard and it is mm-hmm. forcing the kid to do something they clearly don't want to do where like the approach you took tanya is more yeah. like Let's he was a willing in the water like, yeah <laughs> right but it, from from my perspective and maybe this resonates for you jenny you're not a willing participant if you fall in that's fair and we have a community pool and like you do too yeah. so for me it, it was it's a, it's a pure safety thing, right? My kids couldn't talk, so they didn't call for me at that time. Like right. they were six months and that, nine months when they yeah, started. That's true. Derek so was there only was one when crying and screaming ish, but maybe the first lesson or two, and then really not. Like Cruz yeah. immediately took to the water, and he was a happier baby in the water than well, out of it. I think Calvin also, had a harder time because he was older. Of all of our kids, Cruz is is a fish. Yes, like that yeah. is water his, baby place that is, is where place. he recharges yeah. like and and that's so interesting to know that it showed up that early for him oh for sure evermore like he if he needs to be grounded or centered in any way shape or form put, put him in, water. in water and he mm-hmm. is happier he was the same way at four days old yeah like if i just need to reset it'd be like let's go take a bath mm-hmm. so it's, mm-hmm. it's definitely innate yeah um, i think the swim school that our kids went to did decent job to the best of their ability with the kids to make it fun mm. like it was very like repetitive simple skills but yeah ultimately it wasn't swimming calvin continued with stroke classes though afterward and they had that like infinity pool situation you know and like calvin got yeah with the really mirror on the floor and then the a mirror current, so he could see himself when he was swimming oh i know had a mirror and she had a and remote to make the current I, yeah, I only slow. knew about like the current mm-hmm. but yeah calvin got to the point that sounds doing, so expensive it was it was because well, it, <laughs> it was one-on-one and they were like 15 well, 20 like, minutes and stuff really, and it was every day beto teases me yeah, that i paid a thousand dollars for my kid to float and he's probably not wrong yeah, but you know what? Life is priceless. So but get back. You bent. know, the other thing is, like, Evan did both. We did the mommy and me class 
classes starting at four months mm. old because I needed something to do with him, right? Mm-hmm. I could not sit in the house and do nothing. And he did survivor swim. And my child literally still can't swim. Well, <laughs> with love, he's not the most athletic. No, but like, but to be fair, like I've watched him in the pool, and if needed, even younger, he could get to the edge and pull himself up. One hundred percent. But does he look like a drowning rat while he? That's does fine. It? I don't think that he matters. can look like it, but if it comes out between breathing. learning survival swim and learning like strokes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's done both, and you know, he could survive in a pinch. Probably. I if mean, it, it's still if it questionable. makes you feel any better, like Derek doesn't remember most of this stuff because he was doing this like peak COVID. Mm-hmm. And then by the time he got to the pool and he's just was like not into the practicing thing. So he didn't he thought he knew how to. Yeah, swim I feel he was like comfortable the in the water. survivor stuff like scarred him. Yeah, it's like, not, it's definitely not for all kids. Like, made him not interested in swimming. Like he did shame. not want to do it after that. Like he didn't want to go to the regular pool. Like there was like a lot of like. Oh. not wanting to do it personally. That's a shame. And I think, but I think it's fair. It's not for all kids. Yeah. Not for all families. I can understand it, okay. though, because the psychological impact that that, that must have. It's like is, waterboarding a little bit. I'm not going to lie. No, it is. Because like, it's like, okay, one, two, three, eyes in. Yeah. And, like, like, and they like going throw in, his but, face in. But like, if you fall in, you're going in. Yeah. So, like, I, I hear the safety aspect yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. I have less anxiety on those things because like my kid is not around a pool unsupervised. Yeah. I think for me, it was really important that they had good skills. Like I don't drown, but I never learned how to swim. Like I don't know the strokes, and it's mm. something I've. It's, oh, I I've didn't know that. Very self conscious of. Yeah, I, w- like, I would I, have never known. And I think it. I just it was something I wanted them to have. And then and then it got to the point where we never stopped. Like we never stopped. Either they were in swim lessons, or Betta was taking them actively to the Y to practice because I didn't want them to forget. And it was very much from an anxious place, so not necessarily a healthy catalyst. But I mean, it's but my out. kids now yeah. are very comfortable in the water they're strong swimmers they don't remember mm. not knowing how to swim which i think is cool That's yeah fascinating yeah yeah so for you and your family right like cruise cruise is the older right yes and he now is on a diving team he you guys started when did you start swim team the summer like summer swim team yes so we started summer swim he's nine now he was five Okay. And and for anyone listening who maybe is not familiar, right? So there's there are private leagues you can join where people will do swim team year round and you'll travel to different Those locations. are very intense. They're very intense, right? And and it's, you know, it's like Michael Phelps league there, right? I mean, it's probably families who maybe see potential in their kids where it's like you know, two to five hundred dollars a they month might be plus me with it, the goal of funneling into a scholarship or that, that's what's gonna ask. Is a that professional the, athlete? Is that the intent? Is that like the equivalent of like a maybe. travel softball team maybe for some, level? Maybe for, for others, some. no. Okay. I think it's like, but it's intentionally competitive, not recreational. It is. It is more yeah. intense. Okay. The 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 number of practices you go to, the duration of the practices, mm-hmm. the expectations that are set during those practices is a much higher bar. Yeah. Now, what so we explicitly opted out of that, like we yeah. didn't want that, mm-hmm. and so summer swim is so the alternative. We did summer swim, and our neighborhood where we live now doesn't have a team, but our old neighborhood used to. And I remember thinking, like, that would be so fun. It's like six to eight weeks in the summer, so you get the experience. But like it's not year round. I am and kind then, of bummed that like we missed the boat on that. No pun intended. We like didn't miss it. We can <laughs> no, come but on like the boat over. No, I mean, like moving out of like our old neighborhood. Yeah, I would like I liked how big of a community activity that was. Yeah, what I think is cool about the swim team that you guys participate in now. It's very like community stuff. Yes. But I, I, yeah. I don't know. I didn't grow up in neighborhoods that had pools. Like, yeah. I did a mm-hmm. thing in Pennsylvania. So, yeah. it's cool to see that that's something And it's so funny you here. say that's cool because all I can think is like, they close my fucking pole down. <laughs> like, Language. they close my bleep it pull down <laughs> for like certain times for swim yeah. and stuff and I can't go to it and I pay a but lot of money like to go. Seven o'clock on a Wednesday night. Yeah. So summer so we, swim is a very intensive experience, right? They start like late May. It goes through July all of July. two it's about two months. So it's yeah. like Memorial Day through almost the end of July. We I specifically joined one in our town so it's the Apex Breakers. The reason we joined one proximity, but two, they were the values of that team was much more about 
relationships, team building, you know, persistence, grit, supporting Personal each other. Personal growth. Definitely not very competitive. Like, do we still swim in meets and are there still points and is it still a competition? Yes. But that wasn't like the guiding factor for why and how things were done. And that was really appealing to me. This goes back to our sports conversation where your goal is not mm-hmm. to like win. Mm-hmm. Right. In the sports, your goal is to like develop the human. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. swim kind of lends itself to that too, right? Because it's it's a lot of people you're kind of competing against yourself. There's a lot of people in the water at the same time. I was actually reflecting on this recently as we were leading up to recording this episode, because for me, traditional sports was never my jam. Like I didn't like all eyes on me when, you know, I would try to be playing baseball or other traditional sports, right, where I felt very on the spot. And so I started doing a less traditional, like I started doing rock climbing where many people would be climbing together and it was very short, right? Like the duration you would climb if you ever did a competition was very quick. And it's kind of similar with swim. And I think it really resonated for my kiddo. We've only done one season of swim. Jenny brought us in (laughs) to the fold. And I'm so glad you did because I think for my kiddo, and we talked about this in the sports episode, where there's, you know, six to eight kids in the water at the time. Mm -hmm. And like your face is in the water and you hear the cheering, but like People are watching all the things, right? It's not all eyes on one kid and it's over so fast, right? And so I think it actually like really clicked for him and it made it more palatable and and less anxiety provoking for him in the meat setting. But also there's like three or four practices a week. What? That we do for this A too. week? Okay, hold on. 45 minute <laughs> practices. Let's rewind. Yeah. So for summer swim, yeah, I don't know if it's our fourth year, third, whatever. We joined, it's like two months. There are practices for four or five times a week available on this oh. particular team. There is an expectation that you go to one or two a week. And if you go on vacation, you do like no one's coming after you with an attendance clipboard. No, they know but it's like summertime, you're going to go on family vacation. They like, are available. Okay. And what um, is the like minimum expected requirement? One to two a week. One to two. But what about like the competitive side? So of there's it? six meets. Six meets. Total. And you, you are expected to be at those. You can opt. So you can opt out of them. So if you at the beginning of the season, you know when they are. Some swim teams do them on the weekend. Some of them do them on Tuesday nights, which is what breakers do. Okay. They have groups based on age. So there's the six and unders, and then it goes seven, eight, nine, ten, and then all the way up. And then you have the schedule where you know, like, these are the six that you're going to. Did you say your meets are on Tuesdays? They're on Tuesday, Tuesday nights. nights. And it's late Some if you stay the it's whole night. It's an all-day event. And what they, are like, all evening. Are you competing, like, amongst the team mm-hmm. within that age group? Are there other neighborhoods? Are there other yes. Teams? So it's, like, other neighborhood teams or community teams. Do you have to go to other pools? Circuit. Yes. Yes. So there's- three of them are at our home pool. Three of them are away. And they will run through everything. So they do the medleys first. What's a medley? <laughs> Which is, that is like a combination of different strokes. Yeah. It sounds like a y- salad. Y- it can, yes. <laughs> the salad <laughs> stroke. And then they go through like freestyle for all of the ages. All the start at six and under, go all the way through to the 15, 18 year olds. And then they start again like an hour later, backstroke for all the ages, six and under, all the way do through. Do all the kids compete in all the different strokes? Yes. Not necessarily. You have the You can option. opt in or out. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So, so the whole thing is like opt in or out yeah so with this with this team right in particular the idea is that you communicate with your team and your coaches of what your child's going to participate in and so like you asked if all the meets were required they would love for all the kids to participate in the meets because ultimately like you're cultivating these skills throughout the summer right they would love to see the kids compete and that's when you get timed and that's when you can actually see any sort of personal growth and personal development well, in it's only like 10 12 times. weeks it's like every other week you're doing it's not exactly. even it's like six eight weeks but but they made it very clear and this is one reason that I was like, cool, let's give it a shot was because they were like, if you can't make it to a meet, you can't make it to a meet. They're not going to give you That's grief nice. about it. And there might be some other teams that take it way. There are seriously. definitely other teams. That take and it. that was not a good fit for our family. Yeah. But this one has been great. So you go into this like parent portal and you basically can log like we're planning to attend. The swimmer is not planning to attend. You can say like, I just want to do freestyle and backstroke, for example, with Luna that I might do that just to mm-hmm. like get her home 
earlier, right? She can leave. Then with Cruz, he likes to stay all the way through mm-hmm. Butterfly and he likes to do the medleys at the end too. So he, and you can opt in when you sign up or opt out. Mm-hmm. So wait, how many hours are you there on a Tuesday night? If you stay the whole thing <laughs> from setup to going home? Yeah. Four I mean, it starts at 11. It starts at six. So it ends I- at 10. 10 p.m. Are there even yeah. so lights? So is wait. it even dark? It's so it's fun, like, though. It's so wait, fun. Back up. So, so this was a huge culture shock for me. Yeah, yeah. Tanya was like, "You guys are experiencing it now." Yeah. So it was like I, I two years, two years of me, and I was like, "Tanya, you should really join." Like, I think Ryan would like this. Jenny really wanted a buddy. I did. I'm not the me. Well, because you're there for I'll, six. Like, you're there hours yeah, all night. Same. I would want I mean, friends too. We do. We sit and Ryan's like a thermos. But also, you were describing like what Ryan was looking for and what you wanted him. to to experience and I thought that this swim might fit. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so so what what we realized so the practices are only 45 minutes, right? So oh. we're going 3 That's nights a week. They take, three Friday, nights a week. they take Friday They take Friday off. Again, options. I I don't go that much. For Ryan, down. we did go that <laughs> much. Settling down. That's a lot of commitment for the summertime. It's so, it's supposed to be leisurely. This is our schedule. See, you this can- is also when Ryan's in school because we're year round. Oh, that's, oh, that's and you right. say leisurely. That's so interesting. You say that because to me, summer's not leisure because it's so fucking hot. Like we got to <laughs> do things. We live so, at like, the pool anyway. Yeah, it's yeah a matter exactly. of which one. So, like, I live at the pool to like with a drink in my hand and yeah, that's like, not allowed at these. You can't. Yeah, it's drink not allowed. At that? No. no. No, it's a family event. I'm gonna stick okay. with soccer. <laughs> anti fire and anti lush can yeah, hang out like, and do some other things. Who's I'm, anti lush? I am now. Oh, I thought you were anti June. I guess I can do that too. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna stick with soccer mom where you my cup is filled with I think you guys should come thing. to one just to Oh, I would love it. to come and like Please. cheer your kids on, honestly. Yeah. Like, but like I will can embarrass I put stuff them. in my cup? No. No. I won't. But why? No. We can discuss this. Okay. Of that day. But so the thing is, you asked about the meets, right? So the practices are 45 minutes. And that was like once Jenny coached me on like, <laughs> like how you had to be here's a bag that you put together. Here are all the things that live in that bag. It stays by your front door. And like all you change out are the towels, right? And so like once and, and I honestly I was sitting at the parent meeting last night and and they were talking about like, here's all the expectations and yada, yada. And I was like, it would be so helpful if we had like a buddy program, like a parent buddy program. Like an onboarding. For new families yeah. coming in because it was really overwhelming last year. Yeah. But because it I like had a lifestyle. you, because I had Jenny, it really was. And it, it was a very short period of time, which helped me wrap my brain around it. I was like, I can do this for two months. And then we get a break, right? Like, Mm -hmm. cool, I can do this for two months. And it was hot and we wanted to be in the pool. But you're not in the pool. You're sitting beside it. Correct. At practice, though, you can. At practice, you can sit in the pool while they swim. But but then the meets are intense because we roll bougie. So we have a tent that we have to go I and set up. And so you have to find like a spot for the tent. I mean, I agree. Obviously. I, I mean, I bring like a cool. cooler of snacks. I bring a tent. I, yeah, I bring for there for 17 hours. I bring like, Uno Slash, that? like lots of games. So you'll see a little less of us for the summer during swim team. But then you guys will be there with us, which yeah. will be amazing. And, and I think, cheering on the boys. For the kids, the like... But like, what are they doing when they're not swimming? They, they play. Play, play, play what? in the pool, play outside no. the pool. In the same way that your kids in your neighborhood like run around when you're at a party and hang out with each other, that's what swim meets are. They like. play Uno. They will they play. They go to the they, playground. They go to the playground that's next door to the pool. They hang out. They cheer on their teammates, they do right? Like, okay, they have all the cheers. That's a good they lesson. do have a lot yeah. of cheers, like chants. That they Wait. Really like okay. To do. Now I'm intrigued. <laughs> The cheerleader and Ashley's coming oh up. Gosh. Totally. But and there's also like other little moments like on some teams they can there's a heat, which means like if you have like 50 swimmers swimming in an age group, your first heat is called the main and the it's five or six top. swimmers that are in the main, their times count towards points and those points count towards your team. So in theory, right, they are they are recording those times and they are making points to figure out who won, like the apex breakers or the carry, whatever mm-hmm. they are, right? But be, some teams, they only run like the fast folks, right? 
breakers, they run just about everybody. So you'll have subsequent heats. So they try to put them Everyone against, gets a chance. Mm-hmm. Everyone gets that's a chance. Cool. And they also are really thoughtful where they're trying to mix kids in every once in a while to be in a main because that's fun. But also they try to put them in heats with kids of similar times. Yeah. So it's not like no one, one kid one. is like 30 seconds behind. This feels uh, really embarrassing. What helped my son. Yeah. Right? Like he that, that's won. That's what I was thinking. He won one of his heats. And like he was one of so the first. Pumped. And he was so proud and so excited. But it was it was a close race, right? It's it, a fair he was, race. He was he was swimming against his contemporaries, right? Yeah, like exactly. not just age wise, but but skill wise, right? Because mm-hmm. it was his first season doing swim team, and he was eight years old. So like most many kids, I would say probably on the team have been swimming a lot longer, and, and so there's some that, was that swim year round, really and they're about. really fast, and it's really intense. So it <laughs> makes sense, and they would kind of like split them up to make yeah. it more fair, more reasonable, because no one feels good yeah. being like. No, it was left one thing out. I really appreciated, and that it kept me, it made me come back again this season, yeah. and us come back right. And this goes back to that conversation we had about sports, where it's like, is it good for the kid or is it good for the family? Yeah, this the level of commitment so, sounds not good so for what my I will family. Say yeah. For that, and I I think that's a valid point, right? I will say we have one kiddo, right? Uh-huh. We do not have multiples now, but Jenny does. Jenny has multiples, and, but and they both, both your kids are doing it. So. Luna didn't until last year, so they also have this program called the Little Ripplers, which is like oh, it's cute under five. <laughs> There's they like go with one of the coaches and like blow bubbles and do you know songs in the pool, and I signed her up for that. And your survivor swim child, you signed up for the bubbler program. She was five. Just no, she was there. four. But she, she was a survivor float, swim. Like, so no. to do something. Okay. No, she was like, watch me go. I yeah. Bet. Okay, but, I but my bet. point is she was four. She was like freshly, like officially potty trained enough for me to like not worry. And it was like one weekend and they were like, no, they put her on six and unders. <laughs> well, obviously you put her through survivor swim. Which I like, hear you, but you know me. Yeah. And you know how no, that I felt for me. You where so I was out. freaking out. <laughs> and she's like two feet shorter than everyone else. This was last she's year when she did small, but mighty. And, and, and the coach was like, she can bigger. do it. And I was like, can you be in the water with her? And he, he was like, she can do it. It was a, a thing all year <laughs> long. Literally paid thousands of dollars for her to do it. And then you're like, don't do it. I for safety, but like you paid thousands of dollars for you. her safety already. But, but she mm-hmm. did ultimately do it. Okay, I, but mm-hmm. until last year, and same with Cruz when he was four and five, I was in the water. An adult was in the water, like arms way reach away at all times because it comes back to safety for me. Mm-hmm. And I hadn't yet taught her. Not that I taught her. No one had taught her a stroke. Like she didn't know freestyle or back. Oh, interesting. Or anything. thousands of dollars for her to be able to like flip get, float to flip float on float. her back. Yes, right. So, like that, that's so not the same as put my beer down and go get her if she's flipping and floating. <laughs> like, but well, but this is my daughter who for. wasn't opting to flip and float. She was like, I can do this, and then it looks like she's drowning because she's not going anywhere. So I digress. It was a whole thing, but we were getting to a point, and then I interrupted about Luna. So so what I was gonna say, you asked the question about like this idea of is it good for the kid is it good for the family right and and i totally hear you for us it boiled down to we have one kiddo so we were able to divide and conquer sometimes i will say there isn't a level of expectation for the parents to volunteer and to help this whole machine run all summer long yeah. that's nice so there's an expectation for the parents to volunteer a set number of times to do throughout four the points for the summer or you can opt out by the paying little, oh, oh send me a check yes. um, but if you sign up fast you can be like i bring the water I yeah. sell the raffle tickets my I'm husband meanwhile is like i want to MC. <laughs> detour straight to i'll write you a check yeah, yeah. i'm cool that cool whip which for is the an pie option in the face um was it was yeah a real cool good one for pie in the face there's so, so much more we talk about yeah. there's like okay there's social elements right but for us like we we decided this was this is his sport for the summer right, right. Uh-huh. there was incredible physical benefits for absolutely him at so a time when he absolutely needed and would benefit from so in terms of good for the kid yes it also pushed him out of his comfort zone which you guys know my kid if mm-hmm. we let him he will spend 10 hours a day playing video games right so this was a very finite sort of thing that like it is time to go like electronics are done goodbye go and and it helped us to get more of that regularity throughout the week instead of just once a week too and then oh what an interesting thought and then and routine. then the community aspect of it that i started to see develop right like there's some kids from his school that are on the team but this is a community team this is not necessarily located to just one neighborhood or just one school so i really loved that this was a 
combination of our entire Apex community. Mm -hmm. And it helped him meet a couple new friends along the way. And this is kind of like his summer camp, Mm -hmm. right? Like I was able to step back and watch him during the meets, during the downtime that you would think like is just the time you need to kill. And they had so much they have fun. So much fun. And it oh, we don't do traditional summer camps and things like that. And this was a very low cost way for us to have a long running activity that physically benefited him, that mentally benefited him, and then built a community for him that was amazing. Do yeah. both parents go? Or not always. Okay. I mean, Landon and I choose to whenever we can. For practices it's not a requirement. Me. No, for practice, practice it was just me and other. Tanya like hanging yeah. out. No, we go and we would chat, and now we're we've made a deal that we're going to go and read. But all like the boys meets, are in. Do like both parents? Yeah, go? we for like we seven, seven hours. No, I can't because Beto works. Yeah. Okay. So fair. he will normally sign up to like help set up, get my good yeah, again anxiety <laughs> ridden, get my good tent space, get everything in order before everyone else comes, and then he has to go to work. So it. The first year I did it, I actually got Luna a babysitter. Mm. And then Cruz could have this really cool experience. The second or third year, the second year she came with me sometimes, the third, I don't know, my years are blending together. But last Mm -hmm. year, she ended up swimming in some of the meets. And then I would get a babysitter, like pick her up and take her home after like Mm -hmm. a certain time. So she wasn't Because it goes really late. Yeah. Um, 10 p.m. But I love that it gave you an opportunity to have that like one-on-one time with Cruz there too. Like I think that was really special and I'm sure it was special to him because he Mm -hmm. takes a lot of pride in this. Like he is very competitive and he is very skilled. And so I am confident that him knowing that you had undivided attention on him probably Mm -hmm. meant a lot. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, when we first did it, it was just, you know, I'll just do summer. I don't want him to be. And he's not the fastest in the pool. I'll never forget when he was in the six and unders, like his very first race, they put him in and he did it. And it was the most beautiful, I think it was backstroke, the most beautiful backstroke you have ever seen a a five or six-year-old boy do. And then at the end, I was like, buddy, did you have fun? Yeah, I had fun. It's like, why'd you go so slow? (laughs) Like he was soaking up his own. I kid you not. The child literally said to me, well, mom, when I finish, I have to get out of the pool. <laughs> like he didn't, he was not motivated. He didn't to want to quit over. He was motivated to extend his pool time. Oh, I and I had the him. biggest laugh. And there's so many moments like that that are coming from this that are not about winning. Mm-hmm. You know, they stay and they see the big kids race, the 15, 18s, and they're like so pumped. And it's a, impressive. A lot of the coaches are high school and college kids. So they have these like really cool role models. Like one mm-hmm. of the kids is like, a freshman in high school in our neighborhood that he wouldn't have known otherwise. So oh, I hadn't even yeah. considered like the mentoring aspect oh, of yeah, it too. Absolutely. So, yeah. so really started cool. like I joined for the swim, but I'm staying because I think it's really good for him as a human. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Luna's doing it this year officially six and under, And they so went we'll down see. the line. They went down the line and introduced all the coaches, right? So we have a head coach and then we have like two assistant coaches mm-hmm. whom one of them is a graduate of the Breakers. I, he went to college now. He's c- just completed his first year of college. He's back for the summer, and now he's an assistant coach on the team. He swam with the Breakers for like, I don't know, is nine 14 years. 14 years or 14 something. Years. Years. Yeah, he was. Wow. But every single coach that went down season. the line, uh-huh. there was some who had been with the Breakers maybe three years. And then there was seven years, 10 years, 14 years. That That's these a lot of longevity. That's have been unusual. On the, but it's it's this like legacy idea Family. That, mm-hmm. that I think is really unique and special that makes it worth like the, the, the anxiety that goes with like getting there. But once we started figuring out the tips and the tricks and like how to make that process roll through and go easier, it, it made a big difference. Yeah. There's- yeah, our neighborhood has a swim club, swim team, but you have to pass a swim test before yeah, you can be on, on the swim team. What's in the test? Do you know? I think you have to like fully swim the length of the pool. And that was involved in ours too. That I, was a swim test or just like a state To be able to swim the length of the pool without stopping, without touching the just bottom, without having any assistance. Okay. I, I think it's a safety thing. And and so for the little ripplers and the six and unders, there are coaches in the pool. 
They're not one. Can, can you like paint the picture for me? Like where in the okay. pool does the coach away. go while so like throughout the lane? There's to, six lanes the here. Every lane uh, in okay. the middle. There's a shallow end kind of to my left. Mm-hmm. There's a deep end to the right. Little ripplers meet in the shallow end where they can touch and they're like one to one ratio and mm-hmm. they don't do the meets. The six and under swim 15 yards, not quite half, a little more than halfway. Mm -hmm. There's a coach in the water and they're in the water at practice. Mm -hmm. Once you get to seven and and up, the coaches are there. They're obviously monitoring, but kids are basically in a line swimming down and then getting out and going around down and back. So it is a safety. Oh, it's just one lap. So they're not. It depends on the age. So seven Mm -hmm. and eight, you go six six and under, you go 15. 15 i don't know half of the pool mm-hmm. seven and up you go the full length and the, there's the an 25. age at which when do you like the nine and, and, I don't the nine and ten you do one lap as well okay so i think 11 12 11. is when it introduces the idea that they have they to go down and, and it. back oh, yeah because i remember when ryan joined he was he's such a young kid for his age group mm-hmm. that he got into the nine tens last year so he was one of the youngest mm-hmm. last year and now he gets to be like uh, still kind of on the younger end, right? Mm-hmm. He's not the older tens, but he still only has to do one lap. And so that made me a little bit more confident to know that he gets two years of practice of doing the one lap before down. Or the flipping. Before he has to then learn the skills of flipping. But they and, teach just, that. and just the endurance that goes with that, right? And and all the things. Right. Because it's, you guys. You're saying they teach yeah, them It's a lot. Things. So, I, uh, yes. In, I, in all the practices we go to three days a week. <laughs> yeah. God. They work so on it's all like of it. part lesson. Sort also. of. Do I think that summer swim team should be the way your child learns strokes? No. Like these are <laughs> Mine high, does. high school kids and some are college swimmers and like incredible athletes and some are, you know, they're doing the best they Recreational can. Recreational athletes. Mm-hmm. But do I think that once you have basic knowledge in the water and Ryan can do a freestyle Ryan that they learned to do a breaststroke in like three weeks yeah. because of summer swim. Right. Honestly, these kids soak it up like a sponge. Like but it, exactly. Yeah. Once you have that certain like level, like you can propel yourself forward horizontally mm. and not drown. Right. <laughs> then, yes, they can teach them a safe dive. They can teach them the flips. Mm-hmm. They can teach them breaststroke. That's so interesting. And they teach them also like, hey, if you're in a race and you're in a heat, you stay in the pool until everyone's done and you cheer them mm-hmm. on. You clap for them. Like there's all this like unwritten rules kind of swim etiquette mm-hmm. that they're also modeling and teaching it's good teamwork etiquette yes. too yes for sure and they do a swimathon every year where it's like you sw- you pledge you know ten dollars oh, or whatever that. and the money <laughs> i feel like i'm betting on your children like oh loving, i love i will i had so much it. fun last summer with that that's like, the event we should invite the girls to because there's ice hey, cream man. but that money goes to college scholarships for the high school coach oh i had no idea yeah, yeah. i'm just betting on your kids <laughs> <Same>. <laughs> like, when i see you post i'm like why why first of all like why a, have you posted this on facebook and no this is me. not for us to like get fancy new chairs at the pool no that it's to no, I, it's to the coaches many of whom are volunteer coaches that's really cool i didn't even think about that I well really that's why she pack is a swimwell. sponsor we are an official sponsor official, so shout official out. sponsor for the apex breakers swim team so that you know we can help send swimmers to college right isn't that what it's for so yeah we really appreciate and if any other businesses listening want to sponsor the breakers team has been a team since 1982 wow. part of the wow. tar heel swim association okay. You know, running and operating a swim team is really expensive. So that support really helps off. You do get the tax benefit. So if you're local, Mm -hmm. definitely check out Apex Breakers. Or if you're in another community and want to sponsor, you know, look for your local swim team. It's super, Ooh, super helpful. I have a question about that. Is there like an association of these swim teams? Like like cheerleading days are like N or what was it? N C A like yeah. that. Yeah. Do you BRs. have that? It's the There's Tar Heel a- Swim Association. Okay. Yeah. So and it's like it's like the regulatory board, right? So they they yeah. have certain they have like the ums and for policies the policies in place yes. that make sure yeah. that things are being done appropriately and they also are say safe. like if the weather's yeah. bad, they make the call to cancel. Mm-hmm. So there's always a TSA rep at every swim meet. Yeah. So it's not the Wild West of just like (laughs) volunteers deciding what happened. But there are some of the swim teams we swim against that are my perception, probably unfair, like larger, well-to-do, white, upper middle class communities with incredible like – much like the one you live in nicole like incredible facilities like their snack bar is like a quick serve restaurant at disney with like these fancy automatic timers that just magically laser the timers and it's like you can tell those kids are intense and they often win 
But you know what? I think our team has more fun. <laughs> like we're cheering for, again, my, I'm biased showing, but like we're cheering for each other. We're, we have theme nights, like let's all dress in tie dye. Let's do Disney this time. Let's, oh, I we write on that. each other's backs or each other, the swimmers, like eat my bubbles, like all these fun things. So it's just a different vibe. So I guess that's kind of what you're into. And I'm really grateful where we landed and, and what we're No, afraid. I'm so glad that you brought us into the fold. It's definitely nothing that I would have had the confidence to jump into without your encouragement and without your guidance. And so I feel like uh, hopefully, right, if there's anybody listening to this who has ever con- considered it or maybe hasn't considered it, but you have a kiddo who this might fit the bill for them. Like you should give it a try. Feel free to reach out to parents who have been around a couple of years because there's so many tips and tricks to make it more feasible and to make it more enjoyable on yourself because it is a big commitment, but it's a very short commitment. And seeing the positive benefits has been worth it, right? It's been worth the payoff for our family. For sure. Great. And I'm excited for you guys to come check it out. We swim at this downtown pool, the Lila Jones Pool. It's like a blast from the past. I don't know what year it was built, but it's really, really. It feels like a pool from the 70s. You know when you watch This Is Us and the scenes from the 80s? Yes. That's what it's like. Oh, interesting. (laughs) It's like a community pool. Yes. Not a neighborhood pool, right? Correct. No, it is a community. It is the 80s. Is there membership to be a part of that? Yes. So we have to pay a pool membership. So it's a hundred dollars per kid i don't pay for beto and i because we have a neighborhood pool so i can still go to the meets and like what and then every once in a while to do a spirit night where they don't check passes but i don't you have to pay for the kids that are part of the swim team we decided to pay for our whole family to get memberships to the pool because we don't have a neighborhood pool where we do you live. end up going there on we non did. swim team night we did so last summer so the swim team season ends in like july so all of august it's still blazing oh, right. hot here and insert I was like, picture of <laughs> lila jones pool here insert picture here nicole <laughs> it's an outdoor pool too yeah so yeah, yeah. so we ended up going and having tons of family days at the pool throughout august until they closed it that's so i was gonna say was we have really a nice. neighborhood pool and we do pool sundays like every sunday mm-hmm. we go to the pool like yeah all day yeah we spend most of our weekends at the pool in fact our pool opens this weekend no it was our oh, first really? it was our first experience of having regular access to a pool that's really ever nice. and, and at the end of the season they also do a banquet mm-hmm. where they give awards you know it could be like the kid who raised the most money at swimathon <laughs> do, it, does your kid win that he's won it twice mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. to be very clear that's not me no i know that's okay. us yeah uh-huh. <laughs> him too there's uh, worse accolades to might get have <laughs> never mind like, there's like you don't need improved. to know that story there's there, most improved most team oh, cool. spirit there's most team spirit there's like yeah. backstroke specialists so like who ev- votes on these like the, the rest of the team the okay. coaches do. Okay. so every kid gets a medal and then every year you get a pin on that kind of ribbon that goes with your medal for being a member then you get ribbons of course at the actual meets uh-huh and then you get special uh, recognition trophies awards there's all sorts of I'm trying to think like Jason was a previous coach of the breakers who coached for like 20 years. So there's like an award that's in his name, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And the, they're really and it's cute. Not, they got necessarily all based on time on time. No. Right. 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 Like it. And, and they got I all dressed that. up and like mm-hmm. cheered for each other and then ate pizza and cake. And it was, yeah, it was a really, yeah. It sounds like a really good activity, but it sounds like a big time commitment. It is a, a mm-hmm. huge, it is. it is an intense six weeks. It is our activity well and it's interesting because i all year long we have lots and lots of activities scheduled mm-hmm. but for summer we do not schedule activities yeah, other than like our vacation we're not yeah. doing anything like we don't schedule activities in summer because that is our like chill time yeah we don't even do summer camp like so it's i just wonder i wonder nothing. if i know we're we're going a little long but i wonder if i have like a slightly different perspective on it because we are year-round school that's true. We yeah. get little breaks throughout the whole year. We get a two-week break or a three-week break at different times throughout the year. And so this goes while my son is at school for half the time. Those nights on the meet nights. Get Where it's like real, real late. late. And then he has to go to school the next morning. But my kiddo does okay with that. Okay. Some families, your kiddo may not do well with that situation. And then they and so choose, like, we're is... just going to do freestyle and then go home. Like, yeah. you don't have to stay. Yeah. yeah. So I think it absolutely needs to be a family by family decision. And depending on your kid and your kid's needs. For us, we, it it worked, right? Like, my kid's a night owl anyway. He's a party animal. If we let him stay up until 2 a.m., he would. 
right? And so it wasn't a hardship for us to do that. It was probably harder on Landon and I mm. <laughs> than it was on Ryan, but it it worked out okay. But like it it was just My another kid, activity. It was like going to baseball after school for practice as well. But it's only like an hour. Well, the Not practice five hour. Only an hour. Practice anything, that's only even once an anything hour. Else. It's still well, a long time like of the week. No. But my kids will be the ones that will ask, like, we're on vacation together. My kid will be like, can you put me to bed? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it is time. So if and when yeah. he ever wanted to be on a swim team, which I know is a big if, then I'd find one that does Saturday morning ones. And so I those do morning. Then you're morning. there like 8 a.m. to 1. 8 a.m. on a Saturday. Yeah. And, uh, no, I'm so- <laughs> Absolutely not. The Absolutely. Tuesday night is so much better because you don't get burnt. It's hot while you're setting up, and then the sun, and then the sun goes down, down, and and the lights come on, and it's like I don't have to slather them with sunscreen past you know seven. It's wonderful. Goodbye. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is kind of (laughs) nice. I do think you should come to one of the home meets or the swimathon. I would love to come and hang with us and play Uno. I don't have to bring my kids, do I? No. Uh, Okay, great. It's up to you. You can. Uno will be there. When are the meets? Tuesday Tuesday night. night. I'll send you a schedule. We'll, we'll get a whole schedule. Schedule. Okay. We always miss Skip the one fourth of July, but or just come and then go dancing after. <laughs> but it goes until like late. You don't have to stay that. I, you so do I'm, not have to. I'm stay imagining you want the like, full experience to like see what it's all about. Sometimes I at the end, if like, the meet is yeah. close, it gets really fun. The medleys at night. So we only stayed the full, the full night maybe two or three of the six meets last season. Mm-hmm. Because I told my son, I was like, we need to be here for one full meet, at least. For the experience. For the experience. Yeah. And it was a close meet. And like every race that happened, every one of the the main events, right, that happened, like it was a big deal. And I probably got a little more into it than Ryan did, honestly. Still, that's cool for him to see. But mm-hmm. it was really fun to like see the energy and have everyone cheering each other on and building each other up, right? And and it just, it was really special. So it's not for everybody and that is okay. But but we are an official sponsor, so we are going to have to come yeah. and see our banner and all the things that <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Check we're going to be there anyway. And, and we're gonna, I basically live there. Your kids love it. So we're going to love it with you. Through yeah. You and like the aunties that. that you are. I love uh, that. Obviously. I told Ryan, I told Ryan that we were going to be sponsors for the team today. And he was like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah. Yes. So did you tell them that I'm a double sponsor? Oh, I did. <laughs> I did. Are you really? Cozy quarters, yeah, baby. Sponsoring too. I mean, shout out to the DePippo family for <laughs> financing our swim team, even though their kids don't swim. <laughs> even though my kids are like anti-swim, they look like dying fish. In the we'll get you some swag. It's That's a appreciation okay. I'm, thing. I'm here. We're here to support... That's the great thing about like having a pack is that we will support you, Mm -hmm. your kids and everything that you all do, whether or not we enjoy it either. Yeah, we're just living vicariously and experiencing it too. We love it. Yeah. We're we're a unit here. Your kids who swims will sponsor it. Oh, don't (laughs) don't cry. We'll help them win like fundraiser of the year. I'm here for it. Like (laughs) I was cookie seller of the year every year. Like obviously I'm here for that entrepreneur spirit. Okay, but we don't want to push it too hard. Okay. Why? Tell Cruz how much you pledge because the boy will overextend himself. Last year I was bribing. I was like, let's get out of the pool, bud. They're going to give you ice cream. Let's get, there's ice cream. Let's get out of the pool. Let's get out of the pool. Oh no, I'll be there. And he was like, this is my goal. Yeah. I will do it. The child determined. I love that. No, no. Listen. He went to the bathroom. Didn't look good. Went to the bathroom and I was like, okay, great. We're done. Like got him a pool, got him an ice cream. I turn around and the next thing I know, he's back in the pool I love doing him. more laps. It was not until the ride home that he then tells me he went to the bathroom to puke and then came back out to finish. Like this is not this is not this is too much. I mean, so I think health discussions happened around that. Yes, we're not going to do that again. No, <laughs> but I hear determination and willpower and the stubborn. Same. Child no. is stubborn. If we pledge more per lap, maybe he'll swim less laps. Yes, mm-hmm. can we do that? I'm down. Yes, for it. Okay. I think we need to refocus his attention to like getting people to pledge, regardless of money. Maybe How more people or, pledging. Or less, you not, set less like laps. a dollar number. Like and like when there's fee. more dollars that go with that, like it's fewer laps that have to get there and he can't exceed it. Like tell him there's a max. No, I think I'm going to have my parents <laughs> like pledge $20 flat no matter how many laps he does. There you go. Or something like that. Yeah. That's fair. This he was like, ha ha ha. Well, he was, uh, my brother pledged $2 a lap and then my child was like, ha ha ha. 50 <laughs> laps later. 
<laughs> yeah, I pledged a dollar a lap. I don't last remember year. what I pledged. You, so I think you did a dollar a lap. Too. I warned yeah. you. In my mind, I'm like 25 but yards. But it's very much like a rule. Nicole mindset of I like, love you pledge the laps. I will milk you. I <laughs> love that. Love it. Like, this is where it. I'm like, I am here for that. Tell me more. Like, I, you know what? The whole you're it's like, not what I'm trying to. I know. But the whole this is why we differ on this one. Where you're like, oh, he puked and went back, and I was like. Godspeed, good for and him. Like, <laughs> kept going. Didn't like, tell me. That's well, the worst because you'd be like, you can't go back at the pole. <laughs> Protecting your feelings. Nor would I have given him ice cream. But right, but like my point is, is he is. Ryan learned. also did really great at this. Yeah, month. I think Ryan ended up doing like twenty laps. He did or something. Yeah, but he did. Yeah. For him was a lot, and we were very, very proud of him. Yeah, yeah, it was excellent for sure. I'm excited for it again. We're so thankful for your guys' support because it really does mean a lot to Jenny and I. I know I'm still the newcomer on the team, but we were sitting at the parent meeting. I was like, oh, I'm not like the newbie this year. Like, yeah. I knew most of the answers to the questions and it made me feel good. But I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a good summer. Yes, for sure. That wraps up this week's episode of She Pack Unleashed. We hoped you enjoyed diving into the stories of summer swim with us. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> <laughs> diving in. Make sure you tag us on your swim team pictures this summer. We want to see all the kids out there swimming. And if you have um, a swimathon, we'll we'll pledge some swimathons out there at Cheap Pack Unleashed. Thank you for being part of our pack or school of fish, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the school of fish. The school of little swimmers, yes. This is Ashley, Jenny, Nicole, and Tanya signing off. Stay wild and fierce. <laughs>